This is the new 720H gaming headset from Alienware. We've been talking a lot about Alienware these days, mostly because they have been putting out some of the best monitors that money can buy for gaming. Like, real, real bangers. However, their headphones, eh, let's just say they're not exactly as talked about for those. Alienware also has a bit of a reputation for being hit or miss when it comes to a lot of different products. They have a long history. They've been around for a long time. Come back here. Look at that. We got, oh, I kind of like it. There's a little embossed alien logo, kind of subtle. There's also what looks to be like a bunch of the components, just kind of the headset. Like that looks like the microphone. It's kind of neat. Promises 30 hours of battery life with an asterisk. It has Dolby Atmos support and it has its high res audio certified. High res audio certification is kind of meaningless. Don't ever let this influence your purchasing decision. It doesn't mean that it sounds good. It's a badge that you can pay Sony to give. They call this a dual mode headset, which they mean it can run wired or it can take advantage of 2.4 gigahertz wireless with a dongle adapter. They also claim to have AI noise canceling microphones a fast charge, 15 minutes of charge for up to six hours of use. That's actually pretty nice. What else we got for specs? 40 millimeter high res drivers, Dolby Atmos, star star. But note, it can only do Dolby Atmos through the digital connection, which is the USB-C wireless connection. Basically that's because the digital sound processing either happens in the dongle or the headphone. So if you don't have some a source that supports Dolby Atmos, then it won't be able to send it. And this must just be doing an analog signal over the 3.5 millimeter connector. Cause it's just going into your computer. Sound pressure level 105 dB, impedance 32 ohms, and weight of 348 grams. And they got a microphone, but all those numbers don't really matter if the thing doesn't sound good and if it ain't worth the money. But what do they add in as value adds to make it worth the money? Let's find out. We got, oh, a very nice feeling braided cable. I believe this is only for charging as the headset has a 3.5 millimeter jack on it, which I imagine that's how you get wired playthrough. Ooh, Alienware sticker. Oh, I guess this was under the booklets. I missed this. All right, we also have a combo jack cable with a mute switch on the cable. That's pretty nice, as well as there's a microphone. A very similar braided cable to the USB cable. This is actually pretty interesting that they give you this microphone as well, because that means that there's a headset on the microphone as well as right here. They thoughtfully include a USB A to C adapter Oh boy, let's look at this stuff. For onboard controls on the headphone, we have a volume dial, a power button, a audio selector. So I guess that's if you wanna hear game audio or you wanna hear your chat audio, which one do you wanna prioritize? We have a mute button and we have a 3.5 millimeter jack. And here is the microphone, which come out like that. Considering that there's a mute button right here, this uh, microphone doesn't have like a tilt to mute. I really hope that if we push it in, that makes it mute automatically as well. I do appreciate that this can kind of be stowed away. This makes these more versatile. However, since they don't have Bluetooth, it kind of makes them hard to do double duty as both a commuter and a gaming headset. Do the ear cups come off? They don't come off in a way that makes me feel like I'm not about to break them, but you never know. Sometimes you gotta break stuff to find out. Well, I don't know if the ear cups come off, but uh, the ear cups themselves are made of a nylon material. They have a, a good depth in them. You can see on the insides there, there is the right and the left ear markers. And then the headband is adjustable like five levels and it uses a tensioned band and it uses a tension band support, just like a steel series headset or there's quite a few headsets these days that you can use. It doesn't like to stay in place very well, this uh, tension uh, mechanism, but it could fit a wide amount of heads, but how does it fit mine? I have a hat on, so that's gonna add a little bit to the size of my head. They're comfortable for me. On the inside, my ears are touching the inside of the cup, which can be really annoying for some people. This is quite a soft memory foam that's inside of this ear cushion, and it really doesn't put up much resistance against the general clamping force of this headset. Maybe if I make it a little bit bigger, it'll be better, but... Oh, do you see that? I was just adjusting it. Like, now it feels too loose. It takes a little fiddling with to get right, but once you get it on there, I guess it's okay. In terms of like flex on the headband, it's kind of hard to tell, but what this is, is as you can tell it's two pieces of plastic around here with a very slight frame in between. Seems like it's very, very focused on saving weight. Like I can kind of poke through here, like hard, but then here's, eh, eh. The fabric itself is, feels pretty nice though. 
And in terms of just general fit and finish, while it is very plasticky, lines and like materials are minimized. This is rubber for some reason. There's no twist. There is tilt. There's no swivel. You can't adjust, like you really, you're just bending the headset. Now, I just wanna bring attention to where they put the USB-C port on here. It's right, it's right here. Which really makes me think, we must not be able to listen because are they really gonna have it coming out like this while it's on your freaking head? I look like a fool, an absolute idiot. <laughs> so apparently, <laughs> some headphones like the Sony XM5s don't work while you're charging them. I very, very, very much hope that that's not the case with this because it is, I don't care about how fast your quick charging is. If I'm in the game and my headset dies, I can't wait 15 minutes for a charge so I can play for a decent amount of time again. I want to be able to just pull out a cable and uh, you know keep clicking heads, keep winning those games, keep, you know, my MMR, come on. My MMR. But what really matters is how they sound. And you know what sounds really good to me? A good deal from our sponsor, Grammarly. Thanks to Grammarly for sponsoring this video. Grammarly is throwing their hat into the AI ring with Grammarly Go, which offers a generative AI to accelerate your productivity while staying true to your personal style. What makes Grammarly Go so unique is that you can customize your preferred communication style by setting your voice to your personalized tone. The business team uses Grammarly Go to rewrite emails and talking points to be more concise, all while keeping it authentic to our voice. Need help with a video concept? Just input a prompt and Grammarly Go will provide innovative ideas to unlock your creative potential. Our favorite part about Grammarly Go is that it's there to help you write. No need to leave the platform you're on, just download, sign up, and start typing. You'll be amazed at what you can do with Grammarly Go. Sign up at grammarly.com slash short circuit and get 20% off of Grammarly Premium. Game time, let's go. So turn it on, I hold that down the, uh, it's not working bell. Luckily, we got the fast charging, but also plugged. So I don't, my MMR. Now I'm gaming. It appears that this is only a charging cable, which is kind of a bummer. I prefer to have as many connection options as possible. This is the mic test. Give me the gift of the grip top sock, a drip drape ship shape tip top sock. Not your spin slick slapstick slip slop stock, but a plastic elastic grip top sock. Not a spot speckled frog freckled cheap shake sock, but a hodge pot. Oh, oh. The mic sounds uh, like a gaming headset mic, which is famously not very good. You can say words on it. It doesn't really sound particularly like your voice. Maybe it all can be redeemed if with uh, some good old audio. So let's take a listen to some, uh, some music. I've just been informed that this comes in two colors, lunar light and dark side of the moon, which means we gotta listen to some Floyd. These sound terrible. I'm so sorry. These uh, these don't sound very good. If you're looking for a music headphone, you should look pretty much anywhere else. This took all of the detail out of a beautifully produced album, over bloated the bass, loses the detail. It's yeah, but that's just my opinion. What do the graphs say? Well, they say they sound like as you can see, the bass is massively overpronounced in the bass region, so it's not a rumble like with the sub bass region. It's a boominess that destroys all details. You basically lose out a lot of the stuff in the lower mids, so it makes most of your bass notes up feel bloated. The mids are kind of a mess where uh, you have strange peakiness. Probably not that bad if we're talking about like right around the 800 range, but this massive dip in the upper mids around the 300 kilohertz just kind of adds this hollowness that then is made up by just sheer sparkle that can be kind of fatiguing. Really though, it's the bass and the low mid mess up that just ruins the sound of these. And then this little dip up here. But the microphone, how does the mic measure? And as you can see on the mic curve, what's supposed to be a flat line is very not flat. It's not a terrible job. It, like it doesn't do a terrible job of hitting the target, but you can see in the upper, in the, in the very high highs, you just kind of lose detail and there's an overpronounced bit in the lower parts. And way down in the bottom, it might look a little bad, but that's kind of beneath where the human voice lies. So the only concern would be if you have some sort of low rumbling in the background that this might pick it up. However, maybe that's something they can fix with their AI noise canceling. We are yet to get that software installed because it took a dog's age to download. <sighs> this is the worst part about gaming headsets is that every single time you get one, you have to do some sort of stupid song and dance where you have to install an application to your computer that you definitely don't want to have. It takes forever. This 
command center software from Alienware is 1.1 gigabytes as a download. That's not after install. It's super annoying. Dell even screwed this up. You go to this URL and it sends you to their documents page, not their driver download page. You go to this URL and it sends you to every single driver for Dell products. Then you have to search and then you find out that there's a support assist software that you're not allowed to use because you don't have a Dell computer. Thank God you don't have a Dell computer because then you'd have to use it. I finally have it downloaded, but every single short circuit we do on gaming headsets that have some sort of proprietary dumb software take like an hour and a half longer than they need to because we're always fumbling around with this extra bull that provides the consumer nothing in return other than what you can make your pretty lights good how hard is that to do how hard is it to make good software that makes your lights go good I really don't know I'm not a software developer maybe it's really 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 hard so maybe I just sound like it right now, but it's just so frustrating that as a consumer, I have to have this heavyweight thing that's so, that wants to know about my games. It wants me to launch my games from it. I'm not going to do that. I already have Epic Game Store. I already have Steam. I already have all of these other dumb utilities. My, my GPU drivers want to launch my games too. Leave me alone. Well, sorry. <laughs> yeah, John Dell says he's sorry. And this might be another, this is another problem, is that now that we have all these proprietary like standards for sur spatial surround, is Windows expected to support all of those natively? Or am I gonna have to constantly be downloading apps? Windows does have a spatial sound thing. Um, it's not very good. So like I'm all for trying to have better standards, but currently I've been waiting for about 30 seconds for this Dolby Access app to finish like doing its little loading animation. And I don't know if it's, if it's just, if it's, if it's doing anything. I'm yet to really be blown away by sound, surround sound in a headset. There's literally just like limitations that you can't overcome in a headset because the speakers are right by your ears. Surround sound becomes more impactful when the speakers are placed further away from you because then you can hear reflections in your environment as well as there's stuff like the head-related transfer function which is like when sound goes through your head and then you actually hear it in this ear that you don't get with a headphone because there's not as much force. Yeah, Dell did a terrible job. The fact that I can't Google AW uh, Alienware 720H headphone drivers and just get to the web page is very bad. There, that loaded immediately. Once I did it the normal way, not through Dell software, that worked great. Okay, we're doing Dolby Atmos, boys. Here we go. So Dolby Atmos on top of it gives you a bunch of equalizers as, as well as music customization. There's movie profiles, game profiles. Um, so like the game profile prioritizes accuracy positional accuracy for competitive gaming. So it might be a little bit overbearing. It's funny, the Dolby Access app has a little, uh, there's a little section that says professionally tuned for Republic of Gamers. Yo. Get wrecked. Still not really blown away by Dolby Atmos, but maybe it'll be better in a game. Okay, we're gonna play Melaton and check out the latency on this bad boy. Uh, yeah, the latency is actually pretty good on it. There's like not really a noticeable delay. I don't even know how to do the AI noise cancelling. Is that just like default always on? To be clear, that's microphone noise cancelling. That's not active noise cancelling in the headphones. <laughs> I can't even play this on trackpad. Here we go. You know, it's uh, it's good. The spatial audio is good. But again, I'm not very blown away. Oh my god, this trackpad. I will say that they're very isolating. I can't hear my computer at all, and I'm not very playing the audio very loud. Um, and I maybe the guys on set can attest to it because they've been yelling at me so many times to get my attention When you run over people, there's a good crunch under <laughs> I don't know if Dolby was on. I think it may have crashed Um, there's some sort of like interference happening. Maybe it's I don't know. There's interference happening right now here. Look like he's in clackies. Maybe it's my phone too close. My phone's not very close. Yeah, I don't know if it's a connection issue or something, but there's something that's like crackling. I don't know if Atmos screwed it up. I don't know if there's, if it maybe it's low battery. We didn't, they were dead. We didn't charge them for that long. Okay, yeah. How much are these? 160 US dollars. Not worth it. 
not worth 160 US dollars, they're not worth it. Uh, what's the normal price? That's the sale price? Not worth it. Dell didn't do a very good job. <laughs> I wouldn't, I wouldn't buy these. I would stick with pretty much any of the other obvious go-tos of like the HyperX clouds and the Steel Series Arctis 5s or whatever. Those are gonna be a better experience. The versatility of these is undermined by the fact that, can you use, like you can use these with PlayStation? The Logitech G Pro X, that's also a good one. I haven't looked at those personally, but I've heard lots of good things about them. So, I don't know, if you're gonna be buying a gaming headset, don't go with the ones that they send you with your Dell computer. Maybe look at the ATH M50X STS, I know. They're like $70 more expensive, but they're like, you're getting just so much more quality for that product. Yeah, avoid these. Sorry, Dell.